Hello, I'm going to talk today a little bit about synopticity. Um, I really like and I really strongly recommend Richard Ross's article in 19.4 about the kind of threads that tie psychology together, uh, nature, nurture, reductionism, uh, culture bias and so on. Now, what I want to do today though is I'm going to offer up a challenge and the challenge is I don't think the way we often think and speak about these things at A-level quite reflects what is happening in kind of professional psychology. So I'm going to take a couple of these, give you a radical view on it, and let you kind of go away and run with that idea. First one I'm going to talk about is nature and nurture. We often think about this as a debate about nature versus nurture. Our characteristics the result of our genetic makeup or are they the result of something that's happened to us? Well, what I'm going to suggest is that actually there is no longer a debate because we know that nothing is the product of either nature or nurture. We know that genes don't operate in isolation because genes are expressed and create physical characteristics um, only in particular environmental conditions. So, so, so genes don't operate without environment. I would also say that environment never operates without genes because you give two people with a different genetic makeup the same experience, it does not have the same effect on them. And the reason it has a different effect uh, is because of their genetic makeup. So we don't really have an overarching nature-nurture debate anymore. There are particular characteristics where there are debates about what genes are involved or what environmental influences are important, but that's not quite the same thing. The overarching nature-nurture debate, I would suggest, is actually dead and buried. So, my challenge to you, is that true? Should there still be a nature-nurture debate in psychology? The second thing I want to talk about is reductionism. We often trot out the idea, oh, it's reductionist, as a fairly damning criticism of psychological uh, research and theory. What I'm going to suggest to you now is that actually all science is reductionist, and you can't have science without reductionism. The reason being, we take a complex phenomenon like prejudice, and it has so many aspects that it is simply not scientifically possible to study them holistically. Approaches to psychology like humanism that have uh, tried generally fall flat on their face. It's a nice idea, they don't generate any decent research. So, my challenge to you is, am I talking rubbish, or is that a more up-to-date view that actually reductionism is not a valid criticism of anything because you have to be reductionist to carry out any kind of science. Thank you very much.